ComC is your home for buying, selling, and flipping all the hottest trading cards. Their consignment marketplace is home to over 30 million cards, from baseball superstars like Aaron Judge to Marvel favorites like Spider-Man. ComC has something for every type of collector. Visit ComC.com today to build your collection with your favorite cards. You're listening to the Wax Pack Hero Sports Card Minute, a podcast where we discuss both the hobby and business sides of collecting. I'm your host, Mike Summer, and I want to help you buy, sell, and trade your way into a collection you'll love. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Wax Pack Hero Sports Card Minute. A couple months ago, I talked about this attic buy that I that I found like four truckloads worth of stuff out of somebody's attic here in town that I was able to get a mixture of cards, antiques, sports memorabilia, other different random collectibles. And over these last couple months, I've been spending a lot of time getting some of these things listed up on eBay, mixed in with a lot of the traditional cards and things like that that I have put out on eBay. And I tell you what, it's a lot of fun. I can't stress enough how much fun I've had to kind of have something fresh and different and new to mix in with the cards, something to keep me learning and researching and digging in. It's been so much fun. And and just in the last couple weeks, some of the types of things that I've sold in addition to cards are some things like this. I sold a vintage three and a half inch nail file from a manicure set. I sold a, a import DVD from some kind of film festival style movie that's hard to find. I got like $90 for that. A vintage cookie jar. I've sold Star Wars cards. I've sold regular football cards, Pez dispensers, vinyl Smurf figures, Randy Moss memorabilia, um, Saturday Night Fever complete set of trading cards, the world's smallest Magic the Gathering playing decks, a Garfield ornament, miniature Dungeons and Dragons figures, a vintage Kenner Star Wars uh, poster and coloring page, some CDs, uh, just a whole random assortment of stuff in addition to cards. The the most fun thing that I think I've sold that I, I can't believe that somebody finds value in, but hey, everybody's got their thing to collect, was a lot of six vintage McDonald's paper takeout bags that were unused and they ranged all different sizes. And I tell you what, the feedback that I got from that buyer was super positive. He said, these, the big ones are super hard to find. I can't believe I found these. Thanks for putting this out there. So you never know what, what somebody is going to find value in and seeing the joy of some of these collectors of other avenues and, and things that I'm not usually thinking about when it comes to collectibles. It just goes to reinforce that collectors are out there for all kinds of different things. And all of us as collectors are passionate about the things that we love to connect. And so for me to be able to take these things from an attic, get them in the hands of another collector is just the main reason that I do this. I mean, the money is nice too. It's nice to make a little money off it. I'm not going to lie about that. But the joy that I can help bring to somebody who's been passionately searching for some of these items and I'm able to make that connection, I think that's fantastic. I think that's a lot of fun. And I I just wanted to share that today because I think that's a key piece that sometimes we overlook when it comes to buying and selling and moving our collectibles around that, that hobby ecosystem. Well, our main topic today is going to be another super collector conversation And it's going to be with Jeff. Jeff's going to talk about his Derrick Henry collection. And Jeff doesn't have the biggest Derrick Henry collection out there. But what I want to bring forth, and you'll hear in the conversation, is how he's acquired the vast majority of these cards. That's what makes Jeff's store unique. And we'll get into that after I tell you about Underdog Collectibles, the online shop run by collectors for collectors that breaks across YouTube and Facebook several nights a week. And you can see that schedule if you go check them out at udogcollect.com. You can sign up for your breaks there. You can also check them out in their brick and mortar shop in Knoxville, Tennessee to see their full selection of wax single supplies, even watch some of those breaks live in the shop. They're also an approved group submitter to SGC, and you can learn more about their group submission program by checking them out at udogcollect.com as well. And when you do, make sure you tell them that Wax Pack Hero sent you. 
Well, today the Super Collector Series continues, and I am going to welcome Jeff Cox to the show. We're going to have a conversation about his Derek Henry Super Collection. Jeff, welcome. Mike, it's very nice to meet you finally. Um, I'm not a longtime listener, to be very honest. I kind of stumbled upon your podcast. A buddy of mine, another fellow collector, told me about you. So uh, I appreciate you having me and talking about some Derek Henry and some other topics. No problem. I'm I'm happy to have you on. This Super Collector Series has been a lot of fun because it seems like it's one of those things that highlights that everybody's got their favorite way to collect, their favorite person that they like to collect, their team. It just kind of shows that there's so many different ways that we can collect. And so when I heard a little bit more about your, your Derrick Henry collection, I, I said, yeah, we this is a little bit of a unique angle. So we're going to talk a little bit about that coming in. But Let's start with just your collecting background. How did you get started collecting cards? Uh, I'll be told that it, I'm not a huge baseball, basketball card collector growing up. Roughly when I was about maybe 12 to 14 is when I had my peak of ripping and just kind of collecting. My brother and I were not that much into it. We didn't put them in the the top loaders and the penny sleeves. We just throw them in a cigar box and just kind of say, hey, we got this one, we got this one, you want trade trades. So um, I think the first set, that I really wanted to have as bad as it sounds now is the 89 hoops basketball. It just, it's very sentimental to me. Uh, that's the ones I went, you know, hunting for my, my LCS growing up. So, um, you know, I wasn't the biggest collector, but I, I do have a well of knowledge from looking at the back of these cards growing up, just knowing random colleges of players. So um, I'd say that, uh, you know, I wasn't the biggest collector, but it definitely has a, a, a memory for me for, collecting the hoops, especially. So that's how you got started. Did it continue to develop? Did you stop and then get back into it later here as a, in, you know, in, in adulthood or kind of yeah. how did that interest progress from being a kind of peripheral collector as a kid to again, being more interested as an adult? We immediately halted things. When I got on the junior high basketball team, it was basketball and nothing else. Cards went to the wayside for what? just until about two and a half years ago, of course, COVID happened. We settled into our homes and that's where I became addicted, dare I say. So, um, you know, I started going to um, local card stores and remembering there's, or realizing there's newer ones that um, I didn't know about. Uh, a buddy of mine had introduced me to trading card database, TCDB. And uh, that was March of 2021. I got uh, heavily into that, just buying random boxes for $10 and just kind of going through that and organizing. Um, so I'd have to say from, you know, age 14 up till about age 42, no cards of any kind. So a long gap, but um, it's it's a lot of fun. And so you got back into it about a year, year and a half ago or so. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what we had been kind of chatting about was your Derrick Henry collection. So why Derrick Henry? You know, I'm I'm from the Jacksonville, Florida area, and he grew up here playing high school ball. And I remember seeing highlights of this kid. And when I first re remembered seeing him, I'm like, who is this kid? He was just like a, if you remember, Tech Mobile or one of those uh, original football games on NES. He was the bigger player you could have just trucking over kids. And he was just, he's like a unicorn, so to speak. He's a player that I don't recall seeing that dominant on the field. He's just a big guy, quick, that combination is just, uh, and he seems like a down to earth kind of guy from the interviews I've seen and heard. So, um, you know, I just started collecting him and, uh, you know, I'm down here in Jaguar country. So I get a chance to see him play uh, when I go to the games every once in a while. So he seemed to be a, a, a dominant player that uh, I enjoy start collecting. You, and you talked about, you know, when you got back into it, one of the things that you were connected to or one of the sites that you found was trading card database and it's a yes. great resource I, most of the super collectors that i've talked to have mentioned trading card database as one of their primary uh, resources and primary places that they go to get and learn more about their their favorite players or their favorite Absolutely. teams and and what cards are available how many derrick henry cards do you have at this point uh, looking at this, I believe the last count was uh, was at 171, I believe, with no duplicates. And again, I just have been doing it for just over a year and a half. Um, primarily, they're all base cards. There's a few numbered, a few relics, patches, whatever they might go as. 
Um, but, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've only, I've dug through some quarter boxes at my LCS a few times and found some, maybe I'd say 10 to 12 of them, but all of them were acquired, acquired through trading through the trading card database. So it's, I've been uh, doing some work. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that I really wanted to call out and highlight that I thought was unique, you know, 170 or, or whatever, that's not necessarily the most Derrick Henry right. cards that anybody's going to have. But when I learned that the vast majority of what you've obtained so far has all been acquired through trades, mm -hmm. I thought that was a pretty unique angle and a pretty unique take on it. So, so tell me a little bit about how that happens. You know, TCDB has an, an option where you can kind of highlight what you've got. It can highlight, you know, what you're still needing. And if you're kind of looking for trades, how, mm -hmm. what was the logistics like for you to kind of start to put together some trades um, for these Derrick Henry cards, you know, were, were you utilizing cards from your, your collection? Were you utilizing cards that you had bought and realized that you didn't really care that much about? Right. Tell me a little about how does one start to put together these packages and these bundles for trade? First and foremost, as any trading card database user will know, it takes a lot of time and, and thank God that our uh, significant others are patient with us spending time in these offices and just, just going through boxes of cards that I purchased at $10 a clip, a super shoe of like three rows of random basketball, football, just kind of grouping them into the years and the, the types they are, the brands, and then filing them away takes forever. I mean, I, I spend countless hours. My poor wife will attest to this, that, you know, I've used the cards that I've gotten through these $10 boxes as I call it trade bait, because that's what it is. I don't necessarily care with all due respect to the baseball uh, fans and um, I'm more of a basketball and football card fan um, but uh, there's a lot of time and there's a lot of patience in loading all these cards I think I'm up to about which again is not much in the, the real uh, the amount of people that have cards on the website I'm about 55,000 I've ran into people who are close to a million it's just it's sick to see how many cards they have but um, it's taken a when I do trades I tend to look I'd go through before I try to look for trades and I give is an option to click on which ones you put on your want list. So that's another portion of time that does take a long, long while to do. So, um, you know, I go through there and I see which ones I want. I'm trying to do, do base cards to begin when I've kind of tackled the majority of those, I'm going to move on to the numbered and the little more difficult ones to get. But, um, hopefully I answered your question when I, when I just rambled on there. Yeah. So you had kind of identified cards on your want list. You had yes. listed your duplicates that you had mm -hmm. found or the, the cards that you had acquired through some of these bulk collections and things that you were buying. And, and that's what lets other collectors see what you've got available, right? So they might see that they've got some Derrick Henry cards you want. They can look at what you've got available mm -hmm. and essentially reach out and say, Hey, I've got these three Derrick Henry cards. It looks like you've got these four and four or five other cards that I'm looking for want to do a trade. And exactly. is that kind of how it works? That's exactly how it is. Uh, you, you put in what you have um, and you, it has a trade matching option. It'll give you the the list of the last 30 days of people who've been active on the website. They tend to not put the ones that are inactive, which I understand. I appreciate. Um, so you just look and see what you have. You know, I may have a, uh, I also collect some some of the more popular basketball players from the 90s, like your Magic Johnsons, Chris Mullins, Akeem Olajuwon. So I'm looking for those as well. Um, but yeah, it's amazing what people are looking for. It's kind of cool to see the different types of variations of cards, NASCAR, uh, track and field I've stumbled upon, some music cards. So um, it's cool to see, you know, you come up with people who have 30 and 40 matches and you have ones with like five or six. So I try to make my postage worth it. It's generally just a standard PWE postage with envelope um, that we mail out these cards to one another. So um, yeah, the trade matching is really cool uh, feature that I don't know of other websites offer, but Trading Card Database seems to be very well organized and a great platform. Yeah, that's what a lot of people, you know, seem to love it for that purpose. It both helps them identify the cards that they need to track down if they're trying to to get them all or build a, a large collection. But it also has that option to connect them with other collectors who are trying to do something similar with with their favorite team or their favorite player. Right. So where do you rank now on on TCDB as far as uh, the, the number of cards that you've got in your collection for Derrick Henry? 
Uh, I was wrong with the 171. It's only 166. I think we've got five in transition here. Okay. But okay. Um, I think I'm number one by about 30. Uh, next in line's 136. So, yeah, it's kind of a competitive thing. You know, you and I have had a conversation about playing high school basketball, and the competitiveness in a weird way is in this as well. I mean, I appreciate and like Derrick Henry and like watching him, but there's also kind of a, a, a sportsman or gamesmanship of trying to a Com, uh, trying to um, pick up and accumulate as many as I can, as many unique uh, different Derrick Henry, excuse me, Derek Henry cards as I can. So a uh, competitiveness is kind of up there. So it's number one on the website, which, um, you know, 166 is not necessarily a lot. I've seen, you know, the more famous baseball players that have played a number of years with people with thousands of them. I'm just, you know, Derek Henry has only been playing since I want to say 2015. So there's not a whole lot to choose from at this point in his career. Have you had much interaction with any of the other Derrick Henry collectors on the site? You know, that's a good question. I have not. I've kind of uh, kind of eyeballed who I've got, you know, right below me as I look here. And there's a few names that uh, I, I do need to get in touch with and see if they may happen to have something that I don't have and vice versa. Um, so I can, uh, you know, get that number up uh, as much as possible. I love that story. I love that path and angle. And it, it just shows that there are other alternatives for building a collection that don't necessarily mean laying out of pocket costs, right? Right, right up front, right? Like you're turning Absolutely. some bulk collection purchases over time into some cards you want for your collection. You mentioned a couple other guys that you like. What do you have other kind of side PCs or other focuses of your overall collection that you're going after? Absolutely. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I started with my very small goal of just getting the 89 hoops basketball set. I've got that. Um, there's a collector, or excuse me, an announcer set within that. It's a subset, I guess, that I've not seen anyone have that I'm interested because in I'm just a huge basketball fan growing up in that era, the late 80s, early 90s. Um, I'm collecting my son is 11, Hunter. Um, I'm collecting his birth year, 2011, Tops basketball, since he's a big basketball head as pops is um uh as far as players it's primarily just basketball and football uh football besides derrick henry is uh probably josh allen he's just another one of those freak athletes at quarterback um fun to watch of course mahomes another guy that's great to watch and i figured i might as well go with eventually what might be the best tight end and best kicker of all time in my opinion possibly uh Kelsey, Travis Kelsey from the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. And then I think Jason, or excuse me, Jason, uh, Justin Tucker, the kicker for the Ravens. I mean, eventually he's got to be the number one overall kicker of all time, just scoring wise and just percentage wise. So I've kind of uh, started recently collecting those two, especially. Um, but from the basketball end, I'm a huge Magic Bird fan, as you probably can imagine, we're the same age. And uh, Chris Mullen was a guy that I kind of patterned my game after growing up. And then uh, Kim Olajuwon. So those are maybe the the majority of what I collect and uh, have and, and try to try to accumulate. I love that Justin Tucker angle. There's not a whole lot of people that are out there collecting kickers and punters, um, right. but I, I know there's a few people that really go after those. But I am a big fan of collecting some of those guys that are a little more obscure, definitely yeah. not necessarily mainstream. So I will be a supporter and, a, and an advocate for you co to continue to build that Tucker collection. That's awesome. Appreciate it. I used to write a kicker and defenses article for rotogrinders.com, okay. helping highlight some of the, the defenses or kickers that you might want to select in your DFS lineups in any given week. So, um, so many people dismissed those uh, positions as kind of worthless positions. Right. And so there's always a special place in my heart for people that, that like kickers and like defenses. So special teams, um, right. Yeah. So, so I'm a, I'm a supporter of, of you going after that Tucker collection. That's awesome. Appreciate it, One of the other things that, that we've got in common that we learned as we were kind of interacting beforehand is you are also a content creator. So I thought we could maybe spend a couple minutes talking about your show. Yes. So we are in our third season. Um, we, you know, we're trying to get listeners and followers. It's called giving the points. So my friend and I from high school, we grew up playing basketball with each other. Um, you know, during the the first instance when COVID came out, we were kind of secluded we were, we were wanting to do something creative. So we all have a love for college football and wagering and, and placing bets and just kind of pop culture in general. So it's kind of a smorgasbord of that type of thing. So we discuss, um, 
you know, the college football, every week we do a show during the season. Off season, we generally do one per month. Um, we do a list segment where we kind of have a topic and we kind of discuss our top five of this and that. We did one one time, and it can be non-sports related. We did one where our favorite TV, 80s TV sh- comedy show moms or something like that. So something crazy, but interesting to kind of discuss. Um, and then we choose, we have a season long wagering contest where we pick games and have a thousand dollar fake bankroll. Um, and we just put $20 of our own money toward it. Whoever has the largest balance at the end of the season wins the other one's 20. Um, and then uh, we just, yeah, we just kind of talk about pop culture things, things we watch on TV that our listeners might be into and uh, things that, uh, that, that the 40, 50 year old guy might like. So um, we're trying to get it off the ground, even if it's been three seasons that we're doing this, but it's called uh, Giving the Points. You can find it on Apple and uh, Spotify, and uh, we're also on Twitter. Very cool. It sounds like a lot of fun. Um, definitely encourage people to check that out. You mentioned that you're still kind of in the process of building that Derrick Henry collection and some of the other guys that you're after. Are there any kind of notable cards that you've been having a hard time track down that are kind of top on your list of things that you'd like to get? You know, since I haven't delved really into the numbered and the patches and autos, not yet. So I hate to give you a vanilla answer like that, but um, I'm kind of do it in steps. And I, I, I really don't have a, a blueprint of what, you know, I should be following or the way to do it. But I figured the easier ones are the uh, the non-numbered, non-auto, non-relic cards with the the base and some parallels and some um, some other cards that are easier to get. So I guess that was level one of my Henry collection. So um, I think it'd be cool eventually one day. Of course, he's younger than me, but it's still cool to to meet athletes and to to meet them and uh, maybe have my son speak to him and have an autograph and a picture with him one day since he's you know, from here locally. So uh, yeah, that that's kind of the level one of the goal is to, to get all the base cards. Well, if anybody out there has some Derrick Henry cards and they might want to help in that collection and connect with you to see, you know, what you might have that they're looking for, where can people find you and get a hold of you? Thank you so much. So I am on Instagram and Twitter. It's uh, it's kind of a long username and I've kind of used this moniker uh, for trading card database, it's 80s, 90s, hoop head. So it's 80s, 90s, hoop head. Um, so I can be found on most social media platforms. I'm not as active as other people that are in this hobby. Um, but you know, if I have more followers and I'm, I'm starting to get there with some people, I like to every once in a while post my uh, trading card database. I call it my haul. You know, anything that I get in the mail uh, for that day, I like to post it, just kind of have a, a timeline for me to look back to and to share with others if they have comments of if they like those cards. And, uh, yeah, so yeah, I'd be really glad to talk with other collectors. And if anyone has any Derek Henry's that are, uh, you know, rare, that'd be great. I'd love to get in touch with you in trade. Well, Hey, I love the approach that you're taking. It's a unique way to build a collection that I think just, just goes to show that, There's sites out there like TCDB that are connecting like-minded collectors all across the country and and all across the world for that matter. Yeah. And so um, utilizing that type of platform to, to make those connections, to build a collection through trading just takes me back to kind of that roots of collecting as a kid where we built our collections with trading with friends. This allows that to happen across a much broader spectrum than your, yes. your neighborhood. And so I just love that aspect and wanted to, to highlight that. So I appreciate you spending a few minutes kind of talking about your, Absolutely. your collecting approach, Jeff. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Mike. Appreciate it, man. Hi, this is Pat Hughes, Cubs announcer coming to you from the sports card shop in beautiful New Buffalo, Michigan. The Gocher family has built an incredible place here for collectors to buy, sell, and trade cards and memorabilia. Be sure to stop by and let them show you around. TheSportsCardShop.com, connecting sports, athletes, the hobby, and collectors around the world. I love that angle that Jeff is taking in building his collection through trades. I can't wait to see if as he continues to progress in this collection and gets to some of those more limited parallels and cards with a little more value, if he's able to kind of continue that ratio of 
I think 90% or something like that that he's gotten through trades. If he's able to put together some trades with these other packages that allow him to kind of continue building by trades, that's going to be fantastic. Maybe that's some encouragement to you out there. Just because there's certain periods of times where we may not have a lot of extra money to spend on our collections, that doesn't mean that we can't continue to build them. So I want to know if you've done something similar. If you've built a collection through trades or using trades as your primary focus of building sets or building super collections, let me know. Reach out to me on Twitter at the Mike Summer. Send me an email at waxpackhero at gmail.com. Reach out on Instagram or TikTok at waxpackhero. I'd love to know and be able to share some of the experiences that you've had building a collection in that same way. And if you enjoy the show, I would really appreciate it if you would tell a friend about it. If you know somebody else that might also enjoy it, let them know what we're doing here at Wax Pack Hero. I would appreciate it so much. Well, that is all I have for you today, so I'll catch you next time.